Aaron here from Night Combat Solutions. Today I'm going to talk about the Pulsar XD38A and the XD50A uh, at the request from a couple of gentlemen from Sniperside. Um, this will just be kind of an overview video of the feature sets, the uh, my opinion of, of engagement distances and kind of compare it to some other units that are out there just to get a general idea of how it performs uh, for the amount of money spent on each one. Uh, at, at a later date, I'll go back and I'll do a video through the unit, kind of going through the menus, the different reticle choices, uh, the zeroing process, and so on and so forth. Um, but every, the lens is really the only difference on these two. You've got a 38mm lens on the 38A, obviously, and a 50mm lens on the 50A. Um, I'll kind of start out by pointing out the obvious. Uh, they're probably one of the ugliest weapons accessories ever made to this, you know, to date. Um, technically, really, that doesn't matter since you're only going to use it in the dark. Uh, and as long as it functions, I really don't care what it looks like. So, uh, we've got that out of the way. That's, you know, if you can call that a drawback, that would be one. Uh, the only other real drawback, drawback that I see to these is uh, the mount is it's completely functional. It's good and solid. It's rugged. Um, it, it is not a QD mount, so uh, if you want to use one of the, the best features in the device, which is the, which is the ability to save uh, a few different zeros, then you're going to need to either mark it somehow with paint marker sharpies or something so that you're getting roughly the same amount of torque each time that you mount the thermal. Um, a lot of times I'll harp on you know how in my terrain uh, field of view trumps magnification just because we don't have a lot of long shots uh, here in the Ozarks. You know it's mostly wooded, the fields are small so uh, 300 yards is probably the longest shot I ever take locally around here and that's really rare. Uh, one of the advantages of having night vision and thermal is that you really don't need to make long shots. You can easily move into a position that gives you uh, a closer shot. So it's, it's fairly easy to close the distance and, and get, a, get a closer shot uh, to kind of go with the equipment that you're using a little bit better. Uh, that said, you know, the, the 38A is 1.5x uh, optical magnification and goes up to 6x digital. The 50 is 2x optical and goes up to 8x digital. Uh, I'm, I'm quite confident, you know, shooting steel and hogs and, and coyotes and things like that, that uh, the 38A, if, you know, on steel targets, 300 is pretty easy. Uh, things that don't quite sit as still as steel targets, such as hogs and, and coyotes or, or culling deer or something like that. Um, I'm going to kind of limit it to 250 for the bigger animals on the 38A and, and coyotes that tend to just move constantly uh, and pretty quickly. I think I think 200 is probably uh, the limit that I would shoot and be 100% certain that I'm going to make have good shot placement and put it down instantly. Um, and I and I would really add about 50 to 75 yards to those numbers uh, for the 50A. Uh, pricing on both of them, uh, I sell the 38A under $3,000 and the 50A is under $3,500. So for that price range, you're not going to get anywhere close uh, to the image quality uh, with any other thermal out there. Uh, and what really kind of sets these apart for some of the competition, especially given the, the low price point, is the feature sets that are included. Uh, one of the big ones, and I've, I've mentioned it on the monoculars, is uh, how simple the controls are. Uh, there's no complex menu that you have to go through to access different features. Um, and I like that because I would rather just use just the features I need, keep it simple, and not spend all night looking through this thing, messing with a menu, trying to get you know this setting or that setting how I want it. Uh, and it's a lot quicker to learn, too. So if I take a new shooter out with me, um, I can put one of these on a rifle and give them a little five minute crash course and I'm confident that they can remember how to push a couple buttons or turn a dial to, to control the few features that there are. Um, you've got a, a power button up front, uh, you've got your calibration button and you can. there's several different calibration settings. You can have it uh, automatic, manual, or a combination of the two. Um, I have it, I usually leave mine set to where I can use, where it automatically calibrates when it needs to, but I can also manually calibrate before a shot to get a better image. Uh, the closest button to the shooter uh, is a toggle button that will allow you to, if you just hold that button down and release, uh, hold it down for a couple seconds, 
you'll get uh, you'll toggle between white and black hot. If you just press it and release, it'll actually operate your your digital zoom. So you'll keep doubling your digital zoom, uh, and then it'll, at the end of it, it'll reset back to your optical magnification. So that's pretty simple. Uh, the dial on the side, if you were to just grab it and turn it, uh, that's going to adjust your brightness up and down, obviously, respectively. Uh, if you were to push it and then turn it, it's going to allow you to adjust your contrast. Uh, and I like that there's not a lot of thermals that have a on-the-fly contrast adjustment, and that's actually one of the biggest uh, that's one of the biggest features to me that, that really stands out because there are nights when you know you could either go messing with color palettes and this and that to try to get a good image uh, but really a lot of it comes down to contrast uh, when we're talking thermal so if conditions are really poor out uh, like right now it's you know raining the air's it's been saturated with with moisture for days um, I can crank that contrast up to get a better image uh, if it's one of those nights where it's drier it's been cool, uh, then I can get, you know, turn that contrast down and get a really nice crisp image uh, and get a lot more detail in the background too. Uh, going into the actual features, a lot of people that have messed with thermals know that zeroing them can be a little bit more of a painful process than say zeroing a traditional rifle scope uh, with turrets. Uh, and a lot of that's due to the way the system interfaces with the shooter, you know, do you have to push this button to move things this way or is it this way and it's just a lot of times they're not very intuitive. Um, one of the things I really like about the Apex series of scopes is that they have a one-shot zeroing process that's similar to how I would zero uh, a day scope. Uh, you know, I would get a good solid sturdy mount, I would shoot one shot, uh, find my point of impact, move the reticle to that point of impact and then shoot to confirm. Uh, this works in a really similar uh, in a really similar way. Instead of having to just really steady uh, the rifle where you're trying to make your adjustments, you can actually shoot, find your point of impact, uh, do a freeze frame uh, that will freeze the image but it still allows you to move your crosshair. So you don't even have to be looking at your target to zero at this point. You can look down uh, and then use the dial to move your reticle to that point of impact uh, and then shoot a couple shots to confirm that you are indeed zeroed. Uh, so that's that's a pretty big one to me. And then once you get it zeroed, you can actually go in and you've got a choice of a lot of different reticles, uh, everywhere from a plain duplex reticle uh, to various reticles with different holdovers or mill-based reticles, MOA-based reticles. So there's going to be some reticle in there that you're already familiar with or that you know how to use. Uh, and actually, you know, for the distances I'm, I'm shooting at, there's a BDC reticle in there that actually works out really well. Uh, you know, if I'm not going to be shooting past 300 yards, uh, with the exception of, say, a 300 blackout, uh, or the, you know, I actually use one on a 22 quite a bit, uh, with the exception of those, say, a night when I'm running 5.56, 6 6.8, 6 6.5, or, or 308, um, that BDC reticle is accurate enough that my holds are going to get me out, keep me on flesh out to 300 uh, if I'm shooting anything you know bigger than a raccoon. Uh, so that's actually a pretty convenient feature. Uh, and then you can actually change the color of the reticles uh, so that the reticle is going to pop better. For me, I kind of like the lime green, and there's actually a blue reticle that stands out really well as well. Uh, you can also change the color of the icons to best match you know the image. Uh, another good feature that, you know, to me works out really well is that I can go in and select different modes, uh, and it optimizes the thermal for those conditions. There's uh, rocks, which a lot of people know that rocks can actually heat up uh, during the day, and then you go out at night, and it might look like there's animals out there at first giving you a false positive, uh, and indeed they're just rocks that heat it up throughout the day and are taking a little bit longer to cool off. Um, and that, that, that feature actually works pretty well. Um, there's you know, outdoor detection and then there's identification that gives a little bit more crisp image. Um, I, I really like the, the identification mode on it. I feel like that works really well uh, for what I do. Um, but really there's a, there's a lot of different features but they're, they're, they're set up in a way that it doesn't add a lot of complexity to the scope. Uh, you can go through these features if you need to, it'll save them, uh, 
every time you select it so that, you know, if you run out of batteries, turn it off and on. You, you keep those features. You're not having to reset every time you go to the field. Uh, and I've found that I really don't mess with it, the features uh, or the menu items much at all once I've set them to where I want them. Uh, and it's pretty consistent across the product line for me to set the same settings and use those for quite a long time before I really go in and mess with it any. Um, so really that's, you really couldn't set up the menu uh, and the interface with the menu much better in my opinion. Um, one thing that could be done you know, a little bit differently, like I mentioned earlier, was the, the mount. It's not a QD mount. That's one thing that uh, we will be producing some other mounts uh, for these series. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the mount as it is. It's actually really rugged. Uh, the machining's not bad on it. Uh, it's anodized, so it, you know, it doesn't mar very bad. Uh, in fact, you can throw it on a rifle several different times and it's, the mount still looks new. But I do like the ability, especially since you can go in and save zeros for three different rifles. Um, I kind of like the idea of a QD mount so that I can pop off that that scope, throw it on another rifle that I've already saved my zero presets for, uh, and just start using that and not really have to wonder uh, five minutes before I go out if I am zeroed uh, and not have to you know step outside and, and confirm zero before I go out. So that's one thing we will be doing in the future. We're going to have Bobro uh, do some mounts, which will be kind of our highest end. Just they're phenomenal mounts, uh, and then we'll also actually machine some some simpler mounts here in house uh, as a, a little bit more inexpensive option uh, for the entire line of Apex scopes. Uh, your focus is really simple to get to. There's not a wide range of travel, so you're not sitting there spinning a, a focus ring. Um, it's located good. There's nothing in the way. There's no rails or anything hanging over it. It's just a simple lever uh, and it's got about a uh, 40 degree throw on it so it's it's a pretty short throw uh, and it's you still have the ability to fine tune your focus and, and make a good crisp image at any distance. The lens caps are, are pretty robust. Uh, I, I do like these better than say a rubber lens cap that a lot of night vision has that either you tend to break the straps on it or it's constantly getting in the way. Uh, these are just a, a flip up cap that everybody's familiar with uh, and they actually have an o-ring so they're watertight. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of the way they they did that. They've got an accessory rail on the left hand side personally. I haven't really found anything that I just need to mount to it. Um, the, the idea of it I think is to mount a DVR which is a good idea. I tend to mount my DVR in other locations where it's a little bit easier to access with a support hand. Um, but there is that available, so you do have your, your video out for making video uh, and recording your shots. And then there's actually a remote control that's wireless that allows you to operate most of the features on the thermal without actually having to move that support hand back to the scope. Uh, you can Velcro it up you know, on the front of your forend and cycle through the different options. Um, I find that pretty handy, uh, especially it does, the Pulsar does have a little bit longer st startup time than some. It takes about five seconds to go from off to ready to shoot. Um, and if I shave a second or two off of that by just pressing a button on the uh, remote rather than finding the power button in the dark, um, that's a win for me. So all in all, I think it's probably the best scope that you can get. Um, in that price range, and in fact, it's a it's a very very wide price range. You could spend a thousand dollars more and not get better image quality than what you've got with these scopes. Uh, if you do need more magnification, there's also a 75 millimeter version that has a fantastic image and it's got a bigger lens. So if you're in an environment that's fairly open and has high humidity or just generally poor conditions for using a thermal. Uh, it might be a better option yet, but it does add more cost being that the lens is expensive. So if you guys think of any other questions uh, about the thermals, feel free to either let me know and I can do a, a more thorough video or uh, just give me a call or email and I'll be glad to answer those questions for you.